Hi, I'm Caroline Kennedy and I'm excited to be on the online prosperity show and we're going to be talking about my journey from adversity to accomplished CEO and how I'm empowering ambitious women. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got the executive coach herself, Caroline. Caroline, how are you doing, my love? I'm well. How are you today, Prosper? Fantastic. Besides being starstruck and being very nervous <laughs> on this show right now, um, I've known Caroline for quite a while, just um, seeing her work in my news feed and I've always looked up to her. And um, today we finally got her on the show. So we really want to, um, you know, get as much value from her as possible so she can get to um, let us know, um, you know, who she is, what she does, and also in part um, with us because Caroline has been a business founder, an author, a business mentor with over 20 years experience in private and corporate sector. And she has led small to medium and also multinational companies with annual revenues ranging from 1 million to more than 200 million, which is the biggest, which is even bigger than the GDP of my country, Zimbabwe. So she could single-handedly be the finance minister or the president of Zimbabwe from the experience that she quite has. Now, Carolyn, I know I've just butchered this introduction. You could do a whole lot better because you know who you are and exactly um, you know, how far you've come in this game. Tell us a little bit about your story. Well, I think you didn't butcher the introduction. It was quite a flattering one. Thank you so much. And I always find it really hard to talk about myself because I prefer to talk about other people, but you've asked me the question. So my upbringing actually was, if we start right at the beginning, I grew up in adversity. And the other night I was asked to speak on this. I grew up in really challenging circumstances. I end up in care accommodation when I was a teenager and really the odds were against me creating the life that I have. But when I was in that care accommodation, I had a, quite a bit of counselling and my counsellor at the time, John, he really showed me that there was another, uh, there was more to life than what existed at that time in the element of adversity and just living small and at that point I decided that I wasn't going to play small that I really wanted to play big and so I set my sights on making that happen and I think like anything in life nothing worth doing is easy and of course many challenges many obstacles but for me what I was seeing at that time was women who are climbing the corporate ladder to become CEOs and women who were turning companies around and they were sharing their stories of struggles and challenges. And it really, uh, for me, just empowered me to want to, to follow in their footsteps because they were really smashing through that glass ceiling. And so I continued on my journey of, and, and like it's taken over 20, 20 to 25 years to get where I was, which was the uh, CEO of Hotondo Homes, which is the largest uh, building network in Australia. And also I was the CEO for one of the largest wholesale travel companies in Australia as well. So the journey to get there was certainly a long one. And then when I reached the pinnacle of what I thought was my career, I'd done this for quite a while. I had turned particularly the travel company around because the industry was being disrupted. And you'll love this because I know you're all about disruption. And online travel was coming into play and we were a traditional wholesaler at the time. And basically, when I took on the reins of that company, the revenue it was just going backwards. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, what have I done initially? And then I pulled my socks up and said, right, what are we going to do in these circumstances? So 
what we did was, I mean, disruption for me is really organic. It's about putting the customer at the heart of everything that you do. So we went to market and we said to the customer, what are you looking for? What does that look like? We actually went out and observed the customer's buying habits as well. And then we introduced a range of strategies. So, for instance, wholesale travel was pretty uh, static. So, you know, we'd get rates in our system. That's the rate you would get. But we really needed to be dynamic. So we had to look at ways to be competitive, to have instant availability. We also introduced augmented reality with our brochures. And we looked at our call centre, how we added more value, what that looked like. And there was just a, a huge range of strategies that we introduced over an 18-month period that met that customer need but looked at the evolution of the industry as well to remain relevant. And we grew that business by over $14 million in that time when everybody else was our competitors were closing their doors or literally letting staff go. And I remember meeting with one of our main, uh, uh, who we supplied to, which was Flight Centre, one of the biggest travel agents in, the, in, in Australia. And they said to me, you know, you guys are really bucking the trend. How are you doing this? Because, you know, the sales with us are just flying through the roof when everyone else is really challenged. So, for me, I think when, once I'd gone through all of that and come out the other end and the team around me had all come together and we'd done this together, I felt like, what's next for me? And, and that's when I decided to go off into the building industry to do something a little bit different. And I was the first female to run a building company at a franchise building company at that time and as I said one of the largest and and that was quite an interesting experience and franchising I'd never really had any experience with franchising as a business model so just exposure to that business model really understanding that and then looking to grow that business as well and then successfully doing so and then realizing that I always like to grow and develop and I'm always looking for how can I continually learn and I just felt like I'd come to the pinnacle of that and then decided that I'd leave the corporate and private sector and then start uh, a couple of businesses that I've got running now which as you mentioned before so consulting I'm an executive coach I also work with small to medium enterprise businesses because I think it takes one skill level to to build a startup, but it takes a very different skill level to scale a business. So when you get to, you know, around that million dollar mark, how do you scale that up and beyond? And, and so we work with business owners now on looking at growth strategies, improving their efficiencies, leadership development, so that they get better results. And then I'm also about to launch a new business called Empowering Ambitious Women because for me, even though I'd worked in the corporate sector and I had been really passionate about advancing women, particularly so that they could take a seat at the table and own it, you know, a lot of more women are coming into the workforce, but we're not making progress in terms of women sitting in um, management roles. For instance, we've got 16% of women are CEOs. Men still dominate on boards. And we've got a third of women hold middle management positions currently. And... The World Economic Forum recently released or they predicted that we have gender equality and we'll close the gender pay gap by the year 2186. That's 169 years away. That's absolutely ludicrous. And by that stage, scientists have predicted that we will have inhabited Mars and we will have had robot Olympics by that time and I just can't believe the lack of progress so for me I believe you can't be what you can't see and so I had 
I, I, for some reason, resisted really stepping into being the change that I wanted to see. And I realised recently that that needed to stop. So that's why I have decided to step into this, the Empowering Ambitious Women, along with a lot of other women who have walked the path before a lot of our, you know, next generation and, and women who have had success and uh, they're all going to form part of this hub whereby we focus on empowering, which for me is about the action because if there's one thing I know about change, it takes action and courage and the action component for me is what's missing because we have lots of conversations. There are many women's groups out there, but they're all inspiring. And so they might put like, for instance, Michelle Bridges on a stage whereby to inspire women to do better. But where is the action? Where is the teaching? Where is the saying we're supporting you or mentors that have walked that path to help you do that and working with companies on doing an analysis of uh, how uh, how their succession planning for for women but also whether they have any pay gaps that exist within their business whether they're introducing you know, sharing of uh, work to, to allow more women to step up to those positions how are they developing those leaders and what that looks like and one of the I want I want to just finish off with this around one of the key things for me is not that we do it to fill quotas we don't just say that we want 50% women on boards that we actually do it based on merit and that we have a genuine interest in seeing the advancement of women within organisations and acknowledge that too and create environments where they can thrive because it's known and it's been reported that women that lead organisations have higher profit generally. Wow. So there you, go. <laughs> you can tell I'm passionate about that, can't you? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we, we could just maybe end the short answer because... <laughs> The value you just brought in. Um, and if you don't mind, I'm just really just going to peel the onion on this one um, right. a little bit. Because you did come up with some really interesting statistics. I mean, obviously, congratulations on all your accolades. I mean, um, we just recently picked up a property and Watondo was one of the contenders that we were looking into to create a house and land package. So I can see the intensity of the company that you were um you were working with okay because i heard you're not ceo there anymore we didn't go with them so that's <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's one thing but um you you came up with some really interesting uh stories and um yeah first of all congratulations now my biggest question is obviously 2186 is quite a long time to come and um you have mentioned that um, less than six, sixteen percent is it? Um, people that are holding managerial uh, positions. How was it like for you? Um, you know, rising up the ranks in a very male-dominated environment, especially the building industry, where the only women you find are people that are just at the reception or people that just ring you up to tell you your house is ready, and the rest is just you know male-dominated. How did that? Um, how did you survive in, in, in such an environment and still come up, you know, with the leadership that you had? Is there, is there something that was in you or something that women really need to take particular note of um, on, on, on how you, you managed to go past that? That's a really good question, Prosper. And I think, you know, really key one in seeing women advance because for me, over the years, I would walk into rooms where I'd be dismissed because I was perhaps the blonde girl sitting at the table and everyone would assume that she wasn't the CEO because you expect, unfortunately, it to be a male. And I came to terms with that and I was okay with that because when I did sit at that table, I brought value because I had knowledge 
uh, and always prepared and really owned my worth in terms of the value that I could bring. Now, the, the key thing here is we talk a lot about women needing to be more confident, right? And I hear a lot people say to me, but you're so confident. And I'm not. That's the interesting thing. What I am is courageous, though, because I have self-doubt. I have limiting beliefs. I mean, I've lived with imposter syndrome most of my life, which means for your viewers who don't know what it is, that I would be waiting for somebody to tap me on the shoulder and say, you don't belong here, you can't do this job. And it's it's 70% of women at some point feel this way and, and research has shown that. But so for me, it was more about saying, I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to step through that fear and I'm going to do it anyway. Because I never felt ready when at any point in my career when I'd put my hand up for a promotion. And believe me, I had to ask for it time and time again. It wasn't, I mean, yes, at times it would be offered to me, but I would more than likely ask. There were times where there was a no, but the majority of times there was a yes. So I would push through that fear and that self-doubt and be courageous and do it anyway, even if I didn't feel ready. And I think that that's the key. So when I went into Hotondo Homes, and yes, it's male dominated, but for me, it was never an issue. I just never thought about it as an issue because I thought, I've got a job to do. This is what I'm tasked with. This is the team that I've got. And one thing that I know is, and I didn't know this years ago, it's something that came through experience, is that I'm only as good as the team around me. So I would have spent, I'd say, 70 to 80% of my time mentoring my team and setting them up for success. Because when they're successful, then I'm successful and the entire business is successful. And it never occurred to me whether I was male, female, and maybe for years I did sit around the boardroom table where I was the only female, but I couldn't focus on that. I just needed to focus on what I needed to get done. And there were many times where, uh, you know, the, particularly some of my male counterparts, would try and bring me down but again I wouldn't focus on what they were doing I'd focus on what I needed to do to get to be the best leader and to get the job done absolutely so from what I hear from you is it wasn't it wasn't the confidence you were just really courageous and um, you felt the fear so the fear is evident but you just did it anyway and, and I find that a lot of people really um, you know stop dead in their tracks because once they are you know you know you know encompassed by all of those you know external modalities or people or whatever circumstances they actually just shrug and you know you know would not even go around and do any anything in particular and like you say uh, once you do reach a certain level there's always that imposter syndrome you know tapping yourself on the shoulder and thinking that somebody's going to come through and say hey missy what are you even doing in this office what are you doing sitting in this chair and that self-talk would automatically stop a lot of people from going further because they just feel they're not adequate enough you know to fulfill that goal but obviously you have come around that you've come a long way and now you are on a mission to empower other ambitious um you know women that are you know in the same sort of spirits as yours and um what you're about to create is uh, an, a, a, a hub for ambitious women um that you believe are going to be you know the future of what business is supposed to be and you're going to be focusing on you know impacting them and talk and getting them to talk um more of the action about bringing change instead of just listening to like you said earlier on um you know bridges on stage and you know just get inspired and not act so walk us through what this whole hub is going to be about and who's going to be involved and um why should anybody pay close um, attention to what you're about to create here yeah 
good question. So the hub itself is about getting women together, but most importantly for the the women that have led the way already, they're going to share their stories. They're also going to share their knowledge and experience. So that will be in varied forms. It'll be written articles. It'll also be in interviews and it'll be in um, on passing knowledge through training courses and through modules that will sit in there. For instance, the first one being around leadership, what kind of leader do you want to be in creating an action plan for those people in terms of, of where do you want to go in your career? What does that look like? And how do we get you there? And like anything, particularly whether it be this or in business, it's about the journey. Where do I want to be and how do I get there? If you don't understand your how or the steps or the actions that you need to take, the rest is all irrelevant really because that's the whole purpose. It's like climbing Mount Everest. You've got to take it one step at a time, but it's creating that map about how you do that. So there'll be interviews, uh, there'll be, as I said, online courses and lots of articles from these women. So if I can tell you a few women that have committed to being part of this, for instance, we've got Katrina Pollard, who's head of CP Communications. She's actually going to be one of our mentors inside the hub as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're the head of technology for NAB, um, who is also a Telstra Business Women's Awards finalist. She's going to be in involved in being a mentor. I've also got, um, for instance, uh, writing articles as the chief um, operating officer for Stockdale and Lego um, here in Australia. She's submitted some content as well. So it really, for me, it's about these women have taken that journey and lived the challenges that the current women um, who are climbing the corporate ladder face, but even just through building businesses, it doesn't mean that you're only in the corporate world. It could be that you've decided to go out on your own and you're building a business and these women have built that business for, you know, have already built those businesses. I mean, um, there's so many amazing women in the, in the community and in my network that are going to be part of this. And it, it just isn't about me. Um, you know, I don't think you, I always say, um, you do something alone and it's small, but together we can create something really big and have that impact. And that's very much what it's about. So lots of, uh, successful women really deciding that they want to be part of something that makes a difference and that actually has impact because we can't keep having these conversations and nothing changes. I mean, the gender pay gap has existed, you know, it's gone back and forth, but stayed relatively the same for the last um, two decades, you know, so there is no progress. That's the thing. Absolutely. And I can foresee the powerhouses that you're bringing in uh, to, to play here. I think I've had um, one or two encounters with Katri Katrina Pollard. Uh, she's got a yellow book, right? I've forgotten the name of that book. Unknown to Expert. Unknown to Expert, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. I remember, I remember that. And uh, yeah, I did take a couple of notes from there so I can see the caliber of the people that you're going to be bringing into there because um, I think just looking at what you're trying to create here, a lot of women are just surrounded by a whole male dominance. So they don't see themselves in those positions and they don't see themselves um, fulfilling such a roles. And um, I don't believe, um, you know, you, you can hit a target that you cannot see. Yeah. So, you know, you know, yes, you, you, you cannot, you can't be what you can't see. And um, when people are alone and secluded in their own, um, you know, sort of little communities, they're just going around in circles. But if you... It's isolating. Them, yeah, exactly. And if you combine them yeah. with powerhouses like the names that you've just uh, mentioned there, 
you know, um, we've got an African saying, which you uh, tried to elaborate a little bit earlier, that if you go alone, you go far. But if you go together, you go a whole lot further. So how then can, um, you know, people are watching this and, you know, they're excited, they're tired of just watching and they now want to do, um, you know, the doing, which is what the um, Empowering Ambitious Women Hub is, all, is, all, is going to be all about. Um, how can people be involved in this, um, you know, community? So they can jump online uh, with www.empoweringambitiouswomen.com and they can have a look at the, uh, the content that's there. They can listen to the stories. They can share. And then they can become a member where they get access then to those mentors inside. And we're looking at a small nominal fee of uh, to become a member in less than a cup of coffee a week. So uh, at this moment in time, we're looking at $15 a month, which you, and then you get access to all of these powerhouses of women and the support that you need so that you can take that action and the how-to with taking that action as well, which is the most important element. Now, we're developing the site currently and my it was interesting my it's nearly done but my developer went and got married last week in bali <laughs> <laughs> congratulations developer i know and so whilst i we were at the tail end and i said well i can't begrudge him his wedding and so as you know there are lots of people stuck in bali and he is one of them so Whoa. for us we are a couple of weeks away from launching so let's say for the sake of your show january um as the the worst case scenario uh was when it'd be launched absolutely absolutely yeah. is that is that january 28 uh, 2186 or yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feels like that at the moment <laughs> with my developer all the way over it. <laughs> and I, i'm a bit of a control freak so actually i've built a lot of the the structure of the hub myself and he's doing the tech parts which are a little bit too challenging for me but um the 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 biggest challenge for me is that now i've handed control over to him and because i'm a control freak i just want it done you know <laughs> i can imagine but i have no control over the outcome until he finishes his bit <laughs> all right so obviously if we do go to air a whole lot earlier than before the website is ready i will put in details of how to get a hold of um yeah um Yes, yes, yes. And, um, you know, just make sure that, you know, you can send her an email and Caroline will be more than happy to give you details on how you can also be a part of this amazing community. Because from, from what you've told me and from what you've said and what uh, statistics are saying, you know, the World Economic Forum, like you said, is actually predicting that the gender gap is only going to be closed in the year eight, uh, 2186. And that's, that's ages away. And I don't think... Um, you know, people would have wanted to wait that long. So, um, you know, why not now? Why not close that gender equality now one woman at a time? And that's what I think empowering ambitious women is going to be all about. Now, obviously, Carolyn, we all know the truth. Uh, we are still people at the end of the day. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of social conditioning. There's a lot of all of that stuff that's stopping women dead in their tracks from actually really progressing. Or oh, somebody has already tuned off of this video a long time ago. You know why? Because they're just looking at you and they're like, I'm never going to be like that. What sort of last words would you um, want to empower uh, some lady who was held on, either they were watching my blue tie or they were really, really interested in what you've had to say? What, what is the one thing that you would, um, um, you know, impart onto them so that they can also, you know, not become a statistic of the women that are not making it uh, either in the corporate ladder or in the entrepreneurial um, game there? Sure. Well, I think for me, it's very much about, and I don't like using the term of I can do it, you can do it, uh, because I think that there are a lot of women out there in different circumstances. But for me, sharing my story of how I grew up in adversity, and I grew up with an addict mother, and she provided us with little or no basic care. And because of that, I 
you know, like I was, you know, surrounded by uh, street kids and we were, you know, trying to all numb the pain. So as an as a teenager and then, and then I end up in a home. But for me, I share that story. I used to try and hide it away in a cupboard for years because I kind of had shame around it. But then I realised that if I don't share that, then other whether they be women or men in circumstances where the odds were against them and I think that's the thing for me because the odds were against me getting out of that environment because once you're in an environment and you're caught up it tends to be a perpetual cycle so for me it's really about saying the odds were against me yet I still did it and it wasn't easy and there were lots of challenges along the way but it's acknowledging that you have the fear that maybe you have imposter syndrome and and just acknowledging that and acknowledging the fear I mean public speaking for me was a huge fear uh, and I've only really conquered that within the last five to six years. Before that, I wouldn't do any public speaking and I would hide and I'm okay one-on-one -on -one because naturally I'm an introvert too, which means that in big crowds, I lose energy and I don't like being on show. I prefer to give credit to others so that I can hide away. But what I realized was that if I didn't push through that fear, then how was I ever going to get any better at it? And so for me, that was really important. And I decided that I was going to get coaching around it and that I was going to get on stage. And believe me, I was crap the first couple of times that I did public speaking. And to the point where you know, I'm surprised I didn't get boot, booed off stage. But it was a fear. I did it even though I knew that I wouldn't be good at it because I got better and I got better and I got better and I improved and I developed. And I think it's like anything in life. It's first and foremost, acknowledging a fear and deciding that you want to make the change. If you don't want to make the change, then nothing is going to change. And so it, you are the master of your own destiny and you decide the path. And I think for me, I always took the path that was the hardest and never stopped doing that because I wanted to be proud of myself. And I wanted to say, I did this, I achieved this. But did I ever think, you know, at 16 that that was possible? No. If you had told me as a 16-year-old, I would have thought you were bonkers or deranged <laughs> or maybe smoking some funny stuff. <laughs> but, but the thing is, I did do that. And so for any woman out there or any man out there, because I think I don't want that whole distinction between men and women, anyone that has fear and doubts themselves acknowledge it but decide to move forward regardless and become uncomfortable because when you become uncomfortable that's when the magic happens and then it just becomes normal and so for me it's having the courage and being brave even though you feel like you know even though you feel like failure is imminent and I have felt many times like I was going to fail. I mean, leaving the corporate world where I got paid quite a fair salary as a CEO to then decide, you know what, I want to do something a little bit different now. And I actually step backwards to go forwards. I mean, I have, you know, my son who goes to private school, mortgages to pay, but I still made that decision to do something and to push through a fear because I wanted a different life and wanted to, to, to change positions. So even at, you know, mid forties, I'm still doing things that make me feel uncomfortable. And I know that I will be successful, but it might take three years, five years, 10 years to get to that pinnacle for me. And that's okay because it just doesn't come instantly and I'm going to fall over time and time again, but I'm going to get back up. And I think that that's the key for me is that 
I fall over, I take the learning from the failure and then I move forward again and I just keep pushing forward and I, I encourage any person out there that is holding themselves back because of fear, whether it be fear of failure, it doesn't matter, acknowledge it, put it to the side and do it anyway because life's too short to live life with regrets. Absolutely. Now, you see, uh, Carolyn, I was, you know, just sitting here and secretly judging you by myself um, and thinking you are actually going to make it really, really difficult for anybody to want to quit. Um, first of all, you started off very, you know, like you said, poorly in, in like a home and your, your family wasn't all there. And, um, you know, somebody might have been sitting there and she's like, oh, yeah, look at her. She might have had it good. And um, then you went off and started, you know, working in all these big companies um, that are really, really, um, you know, very fierce companies on the market. And you still, you know, managed to make your mark there. And on top of that, you went on and left the steak and came down to eat the ramen noodles with the rest of us. So, you know, <laughs> everybody else. <laughs> Crazy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then somebody might be like, oh, yeah, she might, she can do that because, you know, she, she was corporate now. Do you know what I mean? So I really, really do appreciate your story in as much as it's, it touches everything and how you, you nail it by just saying, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. Like if somebody would have been coming from where you came from and gotten comfortable, you know, being a CEO of a big company, nobody would have wanted to let go of that because, you know, what else, what else is, is there? And then you went on and, and you went uncomfortable. So now you've got this and you're impacting and empowering many other women just because you decided not to be selfish and we're selfless in, in, in your work. And I really, really wish you all the best um, with whatever endeavors you're going to be uh, going ahead with. And especially with the team that you've put behind yourself, it really shows your leadership skills because you're an average of the five people that you hang around with and names that you just mentioned that are going to be part of your empowerment uh, process. I, maybe I might just find out how Bruce Jenner uh, did his, um, you know, um, stunt so that I can also be a part of this, um, you know, group <laughs> so, <laughs> without any questions asked. Thank you so much there, Caroline. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was great to be part of your show and you're doing some fantastic work. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely.